Okay, I'm going to talk about John Searle today. Uh, Minds, Brains, and Science, the first article, it, where he develops what's called the Chinese Room Argument. So let me explain the Chinese Room Argument. The Chinese Room Argument is intended to show that uh, computer programs cannot uh, have mind, produce minds. Uh, computer programs cannot understand anything. That's basically what he's going to show. They simply manipulate symbols. So here's the argument. He imagines that he, John Searle, is locked up in a room and there's a uh, a slit in the wall and through the slit is, are passed from outside symbols for him they mean they're meaningless symbols they're just squiggles and squaggles and uh, he has a, a rule book in in the in the room it's in English he, he reads English he understands English he understands that's the important thing he understands English so there is a, a box that has symbols in it, but these symbols are the English language, A, B, C, D, E, and so on. Um, and when you put these symbols together, he understands what they mean. Like if he sees, for example, R, E, D, he, he understands that it means red, the color red. So these are not meaningless symbols to him. But on the other hand, symbols are being passed into the room that are, he calls them squiggles and squaggles, they mean nothing to him, but he has a, a, a box of symbols in English. It's an instruction. It's a, he's told that to follow the instructions, and what the instructions do is they tell him what to do with these symbols that are being passed into the room. Uh, the instruction book says when you see this squiggle and this squaggle and this squiggle put together in a certain order, then reach into the box of uh, these other weird symbols and put these symbols together, squiggles and squaggles, and then pass them out the door. And he just, so he has uh, instructions in English that tells him what to do with the symbols coming in and tells him what to do with the box of, of these other symbols. And he says, take this symbol out, put it in. And these symbols are going to push these symbols out. What's happening is that the symbols that are coming into the room that he has no idea what they are. He, he just thinks they're meaningless symbols, squiggles and squaggles. They actually are letters in Chinese, characters in Chinese. And uh, when he's reading the book in English, it tells him what, what other uh, uh, symbols, which are Chinese symbol, uh, characters, to put together to pass out the, through the uh, slit in the, in the, in the wall in the door and uh, actually what he's doing, these symbols that he's passing out actually are answers to the question in Chinese. So the people on the outside are, are fluent speakers of Chinese and they think that he, John Cyril, inside the room is a fluent speaker of Chinese because he's answering other questions in Chinese. And Cyril's point is that he doesn't understand a word of what he's doing. He doesn't understand what these symbols mean, even though he's passing symbols out uh, through the wall and through the slit. He's passing, the people on the outside think he, he, he understands, think there's something, there's some mental content in his mind that where there's really understanding going on. They think he understands Chinese. He doesn't. He's simply passing meaningless symbols outside. For him, they are totally meaningless. And what he concludes from that, he says, you know, what I'm doing is exactly what a computer is doing. What computers do is a, there's a computer program, which basically is an instruction book. It tells the, the program what to do with these symbols that are input into this, into the program says when when you see these symbols then then do this and then um 
and, and then produce a certain output. So it's, uh, he says, I'm doing exactly what a computer program does. A computer program is simply manipulating meaningless symbols, following a program that someone else has written and spewing out information. The computer program has zero understanding of what's going on. Think of when you have a calculator and you, and you, and you, you know, you go 30, what's 35 times 42. The computer will manipulate symbols and will give you the answer. Do you think that computer understands anything about math? No, obviously not. It's simply manipulating symbols uh, according to the program that has been designed by, by human beings. Cyril says, if I don't understand a word of Chinese, then the computer, any computer, digital computer, any type of computer uh, that manipulates symbols doesn't understand it either because I'm doing exactly what any computer does. I'm just following a computer program. And if I don't understand it, anything, then neither does a computer. Computers are simply manipulating meaningless symbols. He distinguishes between syntax and semantic. Syntax is simply symbols, meaningless symbols, uninterpreted. Semantics refers to meaning. So if I have the word H-A-T, well, H-A-T, as syntax, is just H-A-T. That means nothing. But if you understand English, H-A-T has a semantic value to it. It means hat that you could put where. Uh, and so when we use words in English, when we speak, we are not just uttering meaningless symbols. We are speaking. We're talking. We're conveying meaning. Right now when I'm articulating, when I'm um, saying words right now, you understand what I'm saying. That's that's what Cyril calls semantics. You're not just hearing meaningless symbols. And Cyril says, when I am passing these squiggles and squaggles outside the room, and the people on the outside think I understand Chinese, I don't understand a word of Chinese. Okay, that's his argument in minds, brains, and science. Simply put, computers, computer programs have no understanding. They have no semantics. They have no, there's no mental content. By mental content, by mental content, he means they have, there's no understanding there. There's no conscious understanding. There's no meaning. There's no understanding. Okay, then, okay, then uh, the, he wrote another article and called The Myth of the Computer. And in this article, he's building upon what he said in the, in the article I just talked about, the Chinese Room Argument. <clears throat> and the Chinese Room Argument says that computers have no semantics. They're just manipulating meaningless symbols. He's come under a lot of attack for that, but none of the attacks, I don't want to go into the arguments right now, but it seems to me pretty obvious that what Cyril is saying is true. Computers manipulate meaningless symbols. I don't know how anybody could doubt that. And they're, they're, the arguments against it are very unconvincing. You can read them. Uh, Hofstadter has argued against it, Steven Pinker, Daniel Dennett. But their argument seems to miss the point. I mean, and Cyril has answered them. But I don't want to get into that debate right now. Anyway, what Cyril is saying is that computers min simply manipulate meaningless symbols. There's no understanding going on. Now, the, the next step is to apply this to the brain. We know, Cyril says, that the human brain is able to produce mental content. We just saw that computers cannot produce mental content because pro computer programs, computer the, the computer is the hardware, the program is the software, the 
the computer program has is just manipulating meaningless symbols. The brain, the human brain, Cyril says, we know produces mental content. It produces semantics. We know that because we speak and we understand what we're saying. And the reason we do is because of our brain. We know we're, our, our fingers aren't thinking, our hands aren't thinking, our heart is not thinking. Scientists now know that the brain does it. So that's not, con there's, not there's no controversy about that. Our brain is producing mental content. Computers do not. You put those two facts together. The brain produces mental content. Computer programs have no mental content. They're simply, a, they manipulate meaningless symbols. All they have is syntax. You put that together, those two premises, the brain, the human brain produces mental content. Computer programs are unable to produce mental content. Therefore, it follows that however, the pro how in whatever way the human brain produces mental content, and no one knows how that happens yet, it's a complete mystery. Cyril's not claiming to know how the brain produces mental content. However, but if you took those, take those two premises, the human brain produces mental content. Computer programs cannot produce mental content. They cannot produce semantics, just meaningless, manipulating meaningless symbols. It follows that however the brain, in whatever way the brain produces mental content, it does so in, 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 it does so in virtue of something other than a computer program. If you're going to produce a machine, and Cyril doesn't ever say, and Cyril believes logically it's possible to produce, to, to create a machine that can actually think, actually have understanding. He's not saying that. Sometimes people say, oh, Cyril doesn't believe machines can think. He, he never says that. He believes it's theoretically possible. But he says, if they are going actually to do that, if you're going to produce a machine or a computer to think, to actually to have semantics and actually to know what it's, what the symbols mean, then it's, you're going to have to read, you're going to have to replicate at least the minimum uh, power that it takes that the brain has to produce consciousness, to produce meaning. Uh, somehow there's something in the brain, there's some minimal level that you have to reach uh, to produce consciousness. However that's done, uh, it's not done in virtue of implementing a computer program. So you have, there's some causal mechanism in the brain that produces consciousness and produces meaning. If a machine is going to produce consciousness and meaning, semantics, it's going to have to duplicate the power of the brain, at least the minimal causal power of the brain to produce semantics. Um, and it's not going to do so in virtue of implementing a computer program. So uh, this, Cyril, this is Cyril's argument against the very widely held view uh, that the brain, that the mind is a computer program. <laughs> I mean, this is a, a lot of people believe it today that, you know, you hear this all in movies and uh, virtual reality movies, you know, uh, the mind is a computer program. Many, many famous scientists believe it. Cyril says it's all nonsense. However the brain produces a mind, it does not do so in virtue of implementing a computer program. That, he, that may be part of it, but it's not sufficient. There has to be something above and beyond a computer program. So simply by implementing a computer program, you will never, Cyril says, produce mind.